This is economics revision lesson for grade 11. This is the fourth revision lesson of unit one, which is about the basic economic questions and alternative economic systems. There are three basic economic questions called what to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce, that confronts every society. The first basic economic question is what to produce, what to produce addresses the problem of allocation of economic resources. We do have the resource, but what shall we produce? Shall we produce tractor or thief? Excavator or automobiles? This is the first question. It addresses the problem of allocation of economic resources. The second Basic economic question is how to produce. The how to produce question addresses the problem of choice of techniques of production. There are two types of techniques of production called labor intensive and labor intensive and capital intensive. Labor intensive is the use of more labor than capital, machineries or equipments, and the capital intensive is the use of more machineries and equipments than that of labor. So shall we produce using labor intensive production technique or the capital intensive production technique? This is the second question. It, it, it addresses the problem of choices of technology. The third basic economic question is for whom to produce? Shall we produce for the miners or the majors? For the poor or the rich? This is the third economic problem. Now, the three basic economic questions, what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce are backed by the three alternative economic systems called capitalist economy, command economy, and the mixed economy. Economic system is defined as a legal and institutional framework within which economic activities takes place. It is a legal and institutional framework that addresses the three basic economic questions. Now, let's see these three economic systems one by one in detail. The first one is the free market or capitalist economic system. Under this market, system under this economic system, the major means of production or distribution of resources are mainly controlled and owned by the private sector for the sake of profit. When we see the features or the characteristics of the free market or capitalist economic system, first there is the right to own private property. Individuals have the right to accumulate wealth. There is no capital selling in free market or capitalist economic system. The other one is freedom of enterprises. There is flexibility under this system. Everybody can produce whatever he wants to produce. The other feature is freedom of consumer's choice. That means consumers can buy whatever they want to buy. The other feature is profit motive. Individuals can gets profit. This profit enables us to produce more and more of a commodity, which leads to efficiency. So this profit motive is an important feature which leads to increase in productivity for entrepreneurs. The other feature is price mechanism. Price is used to allocate resources. It is used to determine the demand and supply of a commodity. The other feature of the capitalist economic system is there is minor role of government or government intervention is minimum under the market economy or the capitalist economic system. There is self-interest and the other feature of the capitalist economic system is inequality of income. That means the gap between the poor and the rich is very high. The other 
feature is existence of negative externalities there are two externalities called positive and negative externalities negative externality means if the action of one party affects the livelihood of the other in this case there is negative externality but if the action of one party benefits the other there is positive externality let me give you example for positive externality there is there is a rose grill engaged in production of flowers and there is a beekeeper here beekeeper if the bees of the beekeeper uses the flowers of the rose grill in order to make honey then there is positive externality another example for negative externality if there is an industry engaged in manufacturing who live around residences there is a carbon emission so it affects the livelihood of individuals in this case there is negative externality so negative externality is one of the feature of the capitalist economic system less is advantage of the capitalist economic system there is flexibility or adaptability decentralization of economic power that means there is delegation of economic powers under the capitalist economic system one of the advantage of the capitalist economic system is it increases per capita income and living standard one of the reason why most of the world countries are following the capitalist economic system nowadays is this due to this good economic performance because it increases per capita income and living standard of millions the other advantage is introduction of new types of consumer goods which is motivated by entrepreneurs the other advantage is that there is growth of entrepreneurship due to the profits motive optimum utilization of productive resources is another advantage there is high rate of capital formation under the capitalist economic system when we see the disadvantage of the capitalist economic system there is inequality of income that means the gap between the poor and the rich is very high under the capitalist economy system it creates too large poor and too few high income individuals the other disadvantage is there is too much waste caused by competition unbalanced economic growth is another disadvantage that means there is disparity among regions among individuals and among countries under the capitalist economic system the emphasis is more on materialism rather than human being this is the disadvantage exploitation of laborers are expected to get lower payments due to competition so it leads to exploitation of labor economic booms and depressions which is fluctuation there is boom or peak and it leads to depression or throw that means there is the up and down fluctuation this is one of the problem of the capitalist economic system it is often characterized by the up and down fluctuations or the up and down movement of economic activity negative externalities the other problem the production of one party affects the livelihood of millions this is one of the disadvantage of the capitalist economic system now let's see the socialist or the command economic system the major features are collective ownership of property that means this is an economic system in which the major means of production or distribution of resources are mainly owned and controlled by the government that means government has a strong role in the command economic system so there is collective ownership of property in capitalist or command economic system but there is the right to own private property under the capitalist economic system there is clear social and economic objectives there is central planning in command economy but there is decentralized planning system under the capitalist economic system there is strong role of government in socialist economic system but there is minimum role of government under the capitalist economy system there is maximum social welfare 
in common economy system, but the social welfare is too minimum under the capitalist economy system. There is relative equality of income. That means the gap between the poor and the rich is smaller under the command economy. But the gap between the poor and the rich is higher in the capitalist or free market economy system. Now let's see the advantage of the command economy system. There is best utilization of economic resources under the command economy system, absence of wasteful competition, smooth working of the economy, balanced economic growth, that means there is no disparity among regions and individuals. There is elimination of private monopolies. The capitalist economic system creates monopolies. The one with large capital will destroy the one with the small capitals. There is fair distribution of income among the society. When we see the disadvantage of the command economy system, there is absence of automatic price determination. Under the capitalist economy system, the price determines the demand and supply of commodities. But under the command economy system, there is no automatic price determination. Absence of incentives for hardworking and efficiency. Because there is capital selling in command economy system, individuals or entrepreneurs are discouraged from these incentives in the command economy system. Lack of economic freedom is the other disadvantage of the command economy system. That is, individuals are not allowed to engage in any sector in the command economy system. So that is the interest of the government. Red tapism or bureaucracy is another problem of the command economy system. Now let's see the mixed economy. Mixed economy is a combination of the capitalist and the command economy system. It's a mixture of the private sector with the government sector. When we see the features, there is coexistence of the public and private sectors. There is economic welfare. There is economic planning, price mechanism, and economic equality. The economic welfare is from the command economic system. The economic planning is from the command economic system. The price mechanism is from the capitalist economic system. And the economic equality is from the command economic system. When we see the advantage of mixed economy, there is private ownership of property. It is from the capitalist economic system. There is profit motive. This is from the capitalist. The price mechanism is from the capitalist. The adequate freedom is from the capitalist. And rapid and planned economic development is from the capitalist. Social welfare is from the command. And fewer economic inequalities are from the command. When we see the disadvantage of mixed economy, there is fewer economic inequalities. This is one of the disadvantage of the capitalist economic system. The ineffectiveness and inefficiency since it is a combination of the mixed and since it is the combination of the capitalist and the command economic system, then there is ineffectiveness and inefficiency. Instability is the other disadvantage. The economic fluctuations, the up and down fluctuations of economic activities is another disadvantage of mixed economic system. And corruption and black markets are one of the disadvantages of the mixed economy system. Now, let's rise to another important lesson under this unit, which is about the decision making units and circular flow of economic activities. There are three decision making units or economic agencies called householders, farmers, and government. Householders are the one who live in one roof and make a joint financial decision. These households are owners of economic resources, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Farmers are the one who engage in converting these economic resources into more useful forms, into final goods and services. So these are businesses engaged in converting economic resources into more useful forms into outputs. And the third economic agent is government. Government is a system with legal power to regulate and control households and farmers. 
Governments engaged in providing public goods and services and collection of taxes. Public goods and services are those goods and services that we used together, but nobody is expected to make payments like school, health center, highways. All these are public goods and services that are provided by the government. And government is engaged in collecting taxes from individuals, households, and, and businesses. Now, lace is a circular flow of economic activities. We are going to see the two sector circular flow model and the three sector circular flow model. Under the two sector circular flow model, households and farmers interact in the product and resource markets without government in a closed economy. A closed economy is an economy without international trade. Under closed economy, there is no import and exports. Again, in the two-sector circular flow model, there is no government. Now, let's see the flows. Households are owners of economic resources. Hence, households are suppliers of economic resources in the resource market. Households are the owners of economic resources and they supply their resources in the resource market, their land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. In the two-sector circular flow model, farmers are demanders of economic resources. In order to produce the outputs, final goods and services, farmers need these economic resources. So, farmers are demanders of economic resources, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. In the product markets, Farmers are suppliers of final goods and services. And in the product markets, households are demanders of final goods and services. So from this relationship, don't forget these four circular flows. First, in the resource markets, households are suppliers of economic resources. In the resource markets, farmers are demanders of economic resources. In the product market, Farmers are suppliers of final goods and services. In the product markets, households are demanders of final goods and services. This flow, the flow that shows the flow of economic resources and final goods and services is called real flow. The, when we see the money flow, when households supply, when households supply economic resources, they in turn receive payments and they receive rent for the land, wage for the labor, interest for the capital and profit for the entrepreneurship. When farmers demand economic resources, they in turn make factor payments, rent for the land, wage for the labor, interest for the capital and profit for the entrepreneurship. When farmers offer final goods and services, they in turn receive payments. Again, in the product markets, when households buy final goods and services, they in turn make payments. This flow, the, the flow that shows the flow of money among the decision making units is called the financial flow. Now let's see the three sector circular flow model. Under the three sector circular flow model, households, firms and government interacts in the product and resource market. That means the flow of the two sector circular flow model remains unchanged. Households are suppliers of economic resources in the resource markets, and farmers are demanders of economic resources in the resource market. Farmers are suppliers of final goods and services in the product markets, and households are demanders of final goods and services in the product market. Government provide public goods and services for households and households in turn make taxes as a payment for the government. When we see the relationship between farmers and government, farmers provide payments for the government. That payment is tax. In turn, government provides public goods and services for farmers. And another additional flow is government will make subsidies for farmers, for those farmers that are engaged in production of essential, socially essential products. Okay, this is all about the last lesson of unit one. Stay safe, stay home. Thank you.